Everyone, welcome back to this episode of Dotted Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, and today I'm going to give a SEMA recap, you know, my fresh thoughts that I have on what I saw at the show, and I'm super grateful that I have a podcast that I could talk about these thoughts. The most common thing that I saw happening at SEMA, and we see it in, on the, in the online space a lot with, you know, people kind of copying other people's videos or doing um, kind of, I, shoot, I even talk about it on the podcast about other detail companies just copying what other detailing companies are doing. And the the risk of doing that is you don't know how that other detail business is doing. So for example, if you copy their flyer or their marketing program or whatever they may have going, you really don't know if that's actually working for that person. And you also don't know all the behind the scenes stuff that may be going on with that person too. They may have a boatload of cash that they're, you know, they can offer free detailing services when you can't. Uh, you really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And so same is true when it comes to products and brands. I noticed, and it's really becoming evident as we're on the tail end of this ceramic craze that started in like 2014, 2015, uh, you know, when Hydrosilic started, F11 started, Torque Detail started, Last Coat started, uh, Produxa or Prosuxa as I used to call it in my YouTube videos, um, CMX, all these brands, some of them you probably never even heard of before. Um, but now that we're on the backside of this ceramic craze, we saw it happen last year where people thought graphene was gonna be the next big thing and it flopped. Um, and I've been hinting at this and talking about this on the podcast. And it was very evident extremely evident and a little bit hard to process, honestly, and a little bit shocking to me, a little bit, a little bit heartbreaking, I will say a little bit heartbreaking, but for me, very encouraging. A lot of brands, most brands, 90, a high 90 percentage of brands have no idea where the industry is going. They have no idea what to do. They have no idea what products to launch, no clue. And for me, witnessing this, and I'll give you multiple examples from a legacy brand all the way down to a brand that I respect highly and think they have great products, and I'm not devaluing any current products. I'm not devaluing any brands. It was just very evident to me that these brands have no idea what they're doing. And they have no idea, maybe they have an idea of what they're doing. I don't want to say they don't know what they're doing. They have no idea where we're going as an industry. <laughs> like, no idea. They don't know what's next. And every brand is searching for the next thing to stand out in marketing, to stand out as a brand that is solid, that you should invest in, that you should buy their products in. No one knows. No one knows knows. And when I talk about no one knows, I'm talking about liquid specific, liquid specifically. So I'm talking about one brand, I think that's killing it in innovation. And, you know, this is why I've teamed up with him in the past. And, and I just absolutely love it is Ian. And let me show you real quick an innovation that Ian has come in. And hopefully I could show this. I don't know if I can, to be honest with you, but something like a clay mitt he has this clay sponge that is like a mesh material and what it allows at least according to ian is for the contaminants to work their way through and not get bogged down into the clay material that is on the towel to me that's taking something very simple that we're used to and then innovating it that's extremely cool i'm very excited for ian ian is you know becoming very well known for innovating the Scrub Ninja, the Barrel Blade, uh, the Mitt on a Stick, he, he constantly is innovating. But when it comes to liquids in the bottle, innovation is very, very, very slim. And I think what it's going to tra translate to, and here's where I get excited because there's a lot of opportunity in this. I think what it translates to, if we see a tightening in the market or a recession or whatever, which most people are speculating that we're in or going to see or whatever, these brands are gonna get squeezed out because people aren't gonna be buying their products. So I do think, and this is kind of scary to even talk about, and I don't actually hope it happens. I really do not hope this happens. I do not wish this on anyone. But I think over the next five years or less, we're gonna see a significant reduction in brands in the marketplace. I think for a long time, people have talked about the oversaturation with brands. 
And I think why there's an oversaturation of brands, it's not that there's too many brands. It's that there's not enough different about brands. <laughs> so why should I pick your ceramic spray over the next guy's ceramic spray? And you don't have a good answer for that other than we're cheaper, which you never want to be competing on price, which is a whole nother thing. But the reason why we feel like the market is saturated is because there's not enough difference between the brands. And that became really evident at SEMA this year. And I, I really hope this isn't like a downer podcast because I was actually incredibly encouraged. For me, it was one of the best SEMA shows I'd ever been to. All the, I think because all the stuff that I'd been thinking about, if I think back to previous podcast episodes, if I think back or I think to my... Uh, me being a, a private label consultant and, and the access that I have kind of behind the scenes. I had this unique opportunity and this unique standing where I'm a behind the scenes guy, but also in front of the scenes guy. And so I get information from people from both sides. One thing that gets really hard is the sa the sa selling tactic of people and the stories that people tell because a, there's a lot of lies, a lot of lies, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of corruption as far as like people just willing to throw other people under the bus which really sucks and I don't participate in that and I don't like it so let me give you a couple examples of where this was really evident and I'll start with a legacy brand in Meguiar's or let me start with a couple other brands too turtle wax not exhibiting they don't see the value in the SEMA show I get it chemical guys the hottest brand in car care right now not exhibiting at the SEMA show SEMA shows in big trouble, big trouble. When you have big, big time brands like that not exhibiting, there was a lot of blacktop space open that was not open in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019 at the SEMA show. SEMA show, and I've done podcasts about this in the past, SEMA show is in trouble. There seemed to be a little bit more foot traffic than previous years, but still not as much as in you know all the years past. Brands also whispering that it's not really worth it for them to be at the SEMA show. They don't really like the politics at the SEMA show. We also saw some brands get bought by blenders. So B&B Blending bought Torque Detail and then don't launch anything out of it. <laughs> so, which is like, what? You bought this direct to, to consumer brand. Same people that own B&B Blending, own Adams Polishes, potentially looking to buy up a couple other brands, but then also by Torque Detail, who in the past was my client. I sold their ceramic shine uh, for only a, about a three or four month period, but so, did a lot of volume with them. Um, but then they get bought by B&B Blending, which is such an interesting play. And then B&B Blending does nothing with it. They've bought it. They've had it for over a year and have done nothing with it. Very weird. Again, so so that's a common theme that started to happen. So you have a blending facility that has on-staff chemist that has unlimited resources because of who they're owned by, uh, which is a multinational conglomerate, apparently, according to my sources, right? And so, uh, but own Adam Polishes, own the blending, own Torque Detail now, kind of buying up these small brands. Zero innovation, nothing cool, nothing to rave home about. Sure, with the exception of our ceramic is easier to apply. Our ceramic lasts 10 years instead of nine. You know, there are certain claims that are getting reused and rehashed, but from a product liquid innovation standpoint, nothing, right? So another legacy brand, Meguiar's, relaunches again, which they've been trying to do since MTE of 2019, I believe. I believe it was MTE, Mobile Tech Expo 2019, that Meguiar's showcased and launched their official wipe on ceramic coating, never before done in the United States. 2019, guys, five years ago, January of 2019 is when, uh, I think January, I think it's January that MTE is, January, February. January, February of 2019, we're coming up on five years ago. Meguiar's launched something they called, I believe it was M88, if I can remember. Let me see if I can find it. M88 Meguiar's coating. And it was Meguiar's, sorry, it looks like it was maybe Meguiar's 788. So, whoa, I, I just stumbled upon, here we go. I just stumbled upon a website, web page on Meguiar's.com. It says Meguiar's, I'm going to link this page below. I can remember to do that so you can they'll probably take it down because someone's listening to this but 
if you can look in the in the description below and I'm going to paste this link because it's very interesting. So it's Meguiar's Deep Crystal Ceramic Paint Coating, the website that the web page I found. It's Meguiar's 788 Ceramic Paint Coating. I'm going to also take a few screenshots of this just so it uh when they take it down I have some screenshots of it. So this kit came with 250 milliliter bottles, a specialized applicator, one six ounce bottle of M122, which I'm not sure what M122 is or was. So M788, right? At the bottom of this page, it says availability at your local retailer and online January 1st, 2020. Okay. This product never launched, never launched. You can actually download the ingredients. Apparently it says you can view the ingredients, uh, no ingredients available. Again, this is like a test page for Meguiar's that I somehow stumbled on. Okay. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> what does Meguiar's launch at SEMA 2023? Three years later, coming up on four years later after this, M888, M888, a ceramic coating. Four years later, Meguiar's, a legacy brand around forever, known for their quality products. They have some of my favorite products from <clears throat> the Ultimate Waterless Wash, which I think is phenomenal. Their Ultimate All Wheel Cleaner is a great iron remover. Their uh, Hyper Dressing is an industry standard. Their, ah, I tried to download their SDS and there's nothing there. Um, just a brand known for quality and innovation. And they're repurposing this, repackaging it, giving you less and repackaging. Why? Because they have no innovation ideas. And that was the common theme at SEMA. CarPro. CarPro, a brand that I think is great. CarPro USA. Let's see if I can, I don't have CarPro. CarPro US. Let's see if it's on their website yet. But CarPro, you know what they launched? They launched a couple things. Something called Clarify, a pH2-ophobic. You know what it is? Let me read it to you. A streak-free glass cleaner. CarPro, a well-known high-end brand, launches a hydrophobic glass cleaner for $95 a gallon. That's CarPro's innovation. Going back to the Meguiar's M88. Meguiar's M888. Okay. Actually, when you Google Meguiar's M888, you don't see their new product. You see the M788, which is more proof that like the attention to detail, guys, come on. It's not that hard, right? So Meguiar's relaunch is something that they're, you know, talking about four years ago, right? Let's see if I can. They also launch two in their professional line. They launch a, they relaunch. So the coding M888 is beyond ceramic, Okay. They relaunch the solo line, an all-in-one. They call it M300. Research solo by Meguiar's. That was like 2008. 2008, Meguiar's copied a brand called System One okay, with a product called Solo One. This is like 2008, 2009, 2010, right in there. You can Google that and find it. Meguiar's launches a Solo One system. And System One, back in the day, it was a one liquid, two pad system. They had a pad adapter that would go on your buffer. And basically, it was a, a wool pad that had two sides. And they had an, a, uh, an attachment that would go on your buffer. Really innovative tech, if you think about 2008, 2009. Really innovative tech. System One had something where you could put the pad adapter on the machine. You would put it on your buffer. And then it would allow you to flip the pad. Mark my words, this may come back. This is a great idea, but we're talking about 2008 tech, right? 2008. So 2008 through 10, somewhere in there. So then I, I, it's just, I get so excited by this. I'm so excited that I have a podcast to talk about this. So uh, System One, if you look back then, had a, I think it was a blended wool pad. And then um, I don't know if it was foam on the other side. It was, there was two different pads, one product. It was called System One, morphed into System 51, which is very interesting because then System 51 turns into a brand that you may be familiar with right now called CSI, okay? Do some research. So there was a split. System 1 turns into System 51, turns into CSI, okay? Part of the company turns into CSI. Part of the company turns into, you guessed it, 
Jay Leno's Garage, also owned by B&B Blending and McGuire's. Or, I'm sorry, not McGuire's, Adams. There's a partnership between Jay Leno and Adams, um, which was then, I believe, could be wrong, could be wrong, but I believe got bought up when Adams got bought up by uh, B&B Blending. So anyway, there's a little behind the scenes action for you right there. So McGuire's relaunches, their new releases for 2024 are two products that they've already tried to release. And then they release another polish called M200 Pro Speed Polish. When I looked at this and some people asked some questions to Michael Stoops on Instagram, because I follow this kind of stuff or on Facebook, let me read it exactly. So Michael Stoops, phenomenal guy, past guest of the show. Michael, if you're listening, I consider you a friend. I like him so much. And he posts, hey, new product intro, M200 Pro Speed Polish. This is a finishing polish. Uh, yet I managed to quickly, uh, very quickly, two passes with the microfiber disc, take out 3,000 uh, grit hand sanding marks. Mike Stoops, I saw Mike Stoops at the Classic Auto Show back in 2019 take the ultimate compound and just completely show up someone who was using angel wax that couldn't, that claimed that they, angel wax couldn't remove some defects. I saw, I saw Michael Stoops with little to no effort. It was amazing to watch. Little to no effort, take ultimate compound and remove the defects in the paint that the angel wax stuff couldn't. It was quite a sight to see a learning experience for all of us. Michael Stoops knows his stuff and knows how to work it. So here he is introducing M200 on his Facebook page that it took out 3,000 grit sanding marks, which is great, right? I love a product that you can use and pair it with a microfiber pad and re get really good defect removal, okay? Andy Varney, friend of the show. Hey, Andy. How you doing, buddy? Me and Andy go way back. He always reaches out. I appreciate our banter back and forth. I didn't even know Andy commented. I just saw it now. Comments better than 205? To which Jose Joe Fernandez, another past guest of the show. Hey, Joe, the funniest guy in detailing, I swear. Comments, nothing is better than 205. To which Michael Stoops responds to better than 205 in some ways, yes. Okay. Another guy, Mark, comments, how does this compare to M210? Because remember, they have 210, 205, right? Which Michael Stoop responds, definitely more aggressive than M210, because M210 is a joke. On par with 205, if not a touch more. A touch more. So it's basically 205, right? Rebranded, rebottled, relabeled. A legacy brand that has chemist at their disposal has zero innovation. It boggles my mind. Okay? Crazy. Beyond ceramic, next generation professional solution designed to ensure multi-year durability on paint surfaces through proper preparation, installation, and maintenance. A lawyer for sure wrote this, right? So multi-year. How many years is multi? Is that more than three, less than two, more than four, five, ten? Multi-year durability on paint surfaces through proper preparation, installation, and maintenance. One thing I tell my clients all the time, I could take a one-year coating and make that one-year coating last 10 years with proper maintenance, okay? With professional coatings often demanding a painstaking application process, Ease of use was a top factor in formula formulating the Beyond Ceramic Paint Coating. A 100% actives formula and proprietary technology combined to ensure smooth spread and forgiving user-friendly application experience. One tri-layer application pad comes in the kit. 40 mLs of Beyond Ceramic. An application guide with a QR code that includes SOP, instructions, video, safety data sheet. $120. $120 going to be available November 2023. Wow. Okay, cool. It's not new innovation. It's not exciting. It's not cool. The packaging looks great, but they rebranded M788 and give, gave way less. Let's read the facts for 788. Professional grade solution for long-term paint protection and durability. Easy to use, extremely user-friendly and available to the public. No certification required for installation. True SIO2 coating. Extreme water beating, durability, durable formula provides relentless water beating. Kit came with two 150, you got 300 mils with 788. 
you're getting 40 mils. Let's read this down here. It says this unique formulation reduces the chance for high spots and is so user friendly that you don't have to be certified installer to purchase or install. Let's see if I hit buy direct, if it brings it to a sales page, it does not brings it back to meguiresdirect.com. Okay. Disappointing to say the least. Chemical guys didn't launch anything new either, even online. Uh, System X, a brand that I really, really like. I've used their products. I like the guys there. I think they're great. Um, I do really like their coatings as well. I think their coatings are phenomenal as well. I recommend people check out System X coatings. See what System X launches. I believe they launched, and I talked to the guys right before SEMA. We were talking about maybe doing, you know, having them promote some. Uh, of the detailing discord, which I thought would be great because I have a relationship with them. I'm not poo-pooing on anyone. I'm really not. I'm just making a point that our industry is a little bit in trouble from a innovation standpoint. And what this is going to translate to is it stifles the whole industry. It stifles me as a content creator because sure, there are new products, but they're not really that new. And then when you talk about, you know, ease of use, it's easy to apply. It's kind of a yawn because then everyone's talking about that. CarPro releases a glass cleaner. They also released, I think, a, a coating for PPF. You know, it's just like, why is this not launching? And so, you know, when we when we look at this, it's from, from two perspectives. So from a marketing perspective, if a brand doesn't launch something new and innovative, it doesn't really get talked about, right? I guess I'm technically talking about it. But if you've been in the industry for a while, you start to realize that, People are redoing this. Brands are re-bringing back old technology. And I mentioned this in my previous episode, uh, in my previous podcast, how brands do this all the time. They just bring back old stuff, repackage it, call it something else, and then market it to us as the detailers. And it's very frustrating, just as frustrating as it is with chemical guys having bad liquids in their bottles when they should have access to insanely good blenders, right? So you see my frustration. My frustration here is that it's like, guys, we, you know, I, I want to talk about new products. I want to showcase these new products on my podcast, on my YouTube channel. I want to give you earned media, right? For free. I'm not asking for a sponsorship deal. If you have a good product and an innovative product, like a clay towel, I will talk about it. I will discuss it. I will run it through its paces. I will do my thing, right? I will give you that free earned media. But it gets frustrating to me. And then I'm going to talk about how, you know, I don't want to poo-poo on anyone. I think uh, I can not find it on their website, which is another thing. It's just so interesting to me. It seems like the first day of SEMA, everyone forgot that the internet existed. And so they didn't post anything about their new products on Instagram. And I'm like, man, only a select few people can actually go to the SEMA show. So all those people that know SEMA is going on that are waiting for you guys to post updates and then you're not posting updates. Hello. There's more people that didn't go to SEMA than were at SEMA that would potentially buy your products. And you also, if you're putting it on the internet, you're putting it on your Instagram, you can really showcase it in a different light than you can in person. Similar to if you have a fixed location shop, you can kind of create an environment that you want versus being mobile where you have to bring that environment to other people. That's a lot harder to bring that environment to other people. But what you can do is on the internet, you can curate stuff. Also, don't you think if you were launching a new product for 2024, if someone went to your website, it would be, they call it above the scroll. So when you land on that website, before you take that first swipe to scroll down the page, above that first swipe is called above the scroll, okay? Don't you think it would make logical sense that if you were a brand releasing a new product that you wanted to sell, because it was new, it was innovative, it was cool, right? You wanted to get people excited about it. If they landed on your website, on your homepage, they would see that product first. No one did it. No one did it. So this bums me out because I want content. I want to talk about people's brands. I want to talk about cool things that are happening to our industry. I don't want to poo-poo on people. I don't want to talk crap. I don't like that. That's not my style. I don't do that. I don't like doing that. I mean, I do do it with Torture Test, but only because the claims don't match You know what's in the bottle. That's a whole other topic. Where I was super super excited and why I am super excited is this is our opportunity. So those of us that have good connections to chemists that know what they're doing, that have a marketing brain that know what we're doing, that can see opportunities like this, this is our blue ocean. This is our moment. This is what we've been waiting for. And so though I have no announcement of my own, 
Sorry. Sorry to let you down. I'm very excited by this. And this is why I think it was the best SEMA show I've ever been to. I, I love seeing everyone, by the way. It was, like, super fun. I saw the Vonix guys. That's great. They had a really interesting sprayer. I know that sounds weird, but I'm, I just look for different stuff, right? Because different is what gets you to stand out. Re-releasing something like McGuire's did, calling it something different by one number, giving way less, and then launching it five years later. It's not new technology. That's not new. But that just proves my point that I talked about in the other podcast episode where I was even late to the game, having that easy use factor to a ceramic coating. I was late to the game. I had that technology available to me like four years ago. I've been doing it. I've been using it. I use my own coating most of the time because I like it. It's easy to use. People have started to get it. It's definitely out in the market. I've sold it to a client who has resold it to someone else and it's in the market. And I heard a lot about that coating at SEMA of how great it is. And like, oh, I don't know if I like that guy, but man, he's got a good coating. And it comes from me. I'm not a chemist. Not a chemist. I just have an outstanding relationship with apparently a chemist that's like the best in the industry. So I, I'm trying to come up with a phrase like, I'm not a chemist, but I speak chemist. <laughs> Sounds so dumb. That's what I thought of today. Because what I realized happens is brands don't, can't speak to the blender directly. First of all, that's the biggest problem. If you try to call B&B Blending right now and you want to get a blend, they're probably going to push you off onto a distributor. There's no way you're getting to the head chemist at B&B. There's just chances are it's not going to happen and you can't buy quantities and big enough to even warrant buying directly from B&B or Dow or whoever, uh, any of these other blenders. There is some shakeup in the blending space a little bit because people are such backstabbers that brands that have been buying from, from blenders are just tired of it. And so they're actually starting their own blending facility, which is insane. But this is where the opportunity is for us, for those new brands. If you have a new brand and you're just getting started, you're just getting out there, you're just trying to get your name out there, you could do it, but you have to innovate. You have to create something interesting. And so as I continue to ponder starting my own brand, my own product brand, I know from the days of working in a booth with Proje when they were first starting and no one knew who they were and they had 27 products that they launched with, the number one question they got was what makes you different? And I think that's what people are asking of like, what makes you different? Why should I take my hard earned money out of my pocket and give it to you? Why should I do that? And it's a hard question to ask for people who don't innovate, who can't innovate, but for people who can, me, I can innovate. I innovate and sell it. Just It's in the market. I just sell it to other people who then put their brand on it. So for people that can innovate, they're going to take over. Those people, those brands will take over. We saw this with Turtle Wax. And Turtle Wax comes out with Seal and Shine or Ice Spray Wax or, you know, their, their Hyperfoam tire and wheel cleaner that just worked. Products that just worked and were good and were fairly priced for what they were. Turtle Wax went from stagnant and declining to almost at the top and still are climbing. Why? Because they innovated. They knew how to talk to the consumer and they offered value. So I'm so excited. I hope this podcast, how long have I been going? Oh my gosh, 32 minutes. SEMA recap is I'm disappointed in a lot of brands. I'm disappointed in a lot of brands, but it very, it, it, it just encouraged me so much and I was so excited to come home and just do this podcast where I could just ramble about my current thoughts because I'm so excited for those of you who have small product brands that have been waiting for your opportunity because your opportunity is coming. Arguably here, but your opportunity is coming. It really, really is. But you have to innovate. You have to innovate. You have to come out with something new. And I think those of us, speaking to the end users now, are tired. We're just fatigued of the BS. We're, we're fatigued of hype claims. We're fatigued of like crazy marketing and then the product not backing it up. We're just really fatigued. We're tired of it. I'm tired of it. I know. And the people that I talk to, the detailers that I talk to at SEMA and that reach out, they're tired of it. And so I am so excited. I hope you're encouraged because like I talked about on previous episodes, if you're a detailer, you know, when the economy is great, everyone does great. That means even the bad people do great, which makes it harder for those of us that are good. Harder for us, those that, that are good detailers, good business owners, are ethical, right? Run a stand-up company, right? Do good for our customers, work hard, we're knuckle draggers, and we're just trying to get our business off the ground, right? When the economy is good and booming, the losers win too. 
the winners win and the losers win. And that makes a lot of competition. And that's really difficult for us as detailers. But what I saw, just like I started my detailing business in May of 2008. For those of you that were born in 2008, hi, I'm Jimbo. I host the Auto Detailing Podcast. Welcome. But I started detailing in 2008. And that was prime time recession time. The biggest recession since the Great Depression is what was said, right? And I was in a BNI group or a business networking international group, and we had pins on our, you know, that they gave out during that time. And the pin said, I refuse to participate in a recession, right? And I always remember that because I'm kind of a bumper sticker guy, kind of a quotes guy. And I, I held on to that is that I'm refusing to participate in this recession. And what happens in a recession is the losers lose and the winners win. That's it. And that's, you may have heard it as the rich get richer, right? Because the winners win. When do the most, when do wealthy people make the most of their money? Is it during a boom or a bust? It's during a bust. Google it, fact check me, don't take my word for it. Why? Because there's more opportunities for those that are ethical, innovative, and creative during a downturn. Why? Because there's more, there's less competition and people are still buying. And that's why I'm excited about what's coming in the next five years. I hope I don't eat my words, but I don't think I'm going to. Done it before, eat my words. But I've seen this before. And like I've talked about in, in previous podcast episodes, I, I like to analyze stuff. I, that's why I like to do podcasts like this. This is my post-action analysis of the SEMA show. Remember I talked about this in the previous podcast episode. I like decompress in a way, whether it's after a detail, after a podcast episode, after a SEMA show, after a meeting with a client, I decompress and do a post action analysis. I heard this, that the military does it. I was never in the military, but I heard they do this. And so I thought it was a good idea if the military is doing it, I, I'll try it, right? It's a post action analysis. After the, after the battle, they come back. What do we do right? What do we do wrong? What can we do better next time? What could we learn? What do we need to work on? Where are we at? What's the landscape, right? And they do a report on it, apparently, right? So this is my report on the SEMA show. And so I'm very encouraged. I hope that this podcast was encouraging to you, first and foremost, that you would be encouraged to know that there is so much opportunity coming for you. There's so much opportunity coming for me, but we have to be good. You have to be good. And so, yeah, that's my post-action analysis of the SEMA show 2023. Disappointed in a lot, but overarching. The best SEMA show I've ever been to. Super encouraged. I'd love seeing all you guys. Love talking to you guys. There's a bunch of mix-up, a bunch of drama in the industry. But that's what happens, too, is that because there's no innovation, the industry stays here instead of continuing to go up. And so what we need to do is rally together and make the industry continue to go up. Because what happens if we make the industry go up? And this is why I get frustrated. If the industry is stagnant, then my detailing business becomes stagnant, right? It's because then it's not in the lexicon. Consumers aren't hearing about cool stuff. Um, They're not calling asking for a ceramic coating. I've been hearing about the ceramic stuff. What is it? Can you explain it? Right? We need stuff to trickle down out to the everyday consumer, Because if you're running a detailing business, you want the consumer to know about clay bars. You want them to know about ceramic coatings. You want them to know about the latest and greatest. And that stuff comes out of the professional side of stuff and trickles down to the people that will be your customer as a detailer, mobile detailer, shop detailer, it doesn't matter, right? That will be your customer because they'll go, oh, wow, ceramic coatings, I need it. I saw that like crazy commercial about how ceramic coatings work. I I don't want to install it. I don't have time. I'm a little scared. I'm not a car person, but I want it. Let me search detail shops and get it done, right? So when brands at the top are innovating, Cerakote, another example, wants to say that they're, you know, private labeling all these, you know, coating companies. And all I heard at SEMA was like, we don't buy from Cerakote. 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 What are they talking about? Right? I'm sure they do sell to a lot of brands, that private label. I talked to a couple. We buy from Cerakote. We don't dilute it. What are they talking about? They buy our stuff and then dilute it. That's weird. So if Cerakote was so innovative, why did they come out with a lookalike product? A ceramic coating that's easy to use. So whatever, that's what McGuire's was saying four years ago, right? So... We need stuff to trickle down, come out from the industry, trickle down to consumers. 
so that we could detail the consumer's car, so we can educate the consumers on on uh, ceramic coatings and all that. So just know that I, I'm excited. We should all be excited by this. Be careful that you don't get mixed up into the hype of the industry and buying like hundred dollar a gallon glass cleaner. Seems a little crazy. I'm sorry if I missed. Uh, and they also came out with a leather conditioner and uh, leather conditioner and I think it was a leather. Leather cleaner and conditioner. Rupes did come out with the hybrid. Um, it looks like the retail price on that is going to be for the 15 inch is going to be 920. The 21 is going to be 950. Car Pro US does have it on sale for 735 and 760. So the 21 is going to be 760. The seven uh, the 15 is going to be 735. Uh, battery powered machine. Uh, Buff and Shine came out with some cool pads with. Some sort of like easy to put on, like it's easy to put your the placement on your uh, machine. I, I didn't get a chance to try the Rupes. It looks compelling. I love battery technology. I love the idea of a cordless machine. A couple things I didn't like about it. To me, it kind of looks like a knockoff. Like I know that sounds weird, but it kind of looks like a knockoff. That could just totally be me. But they said they built it brand new from the ground up. Maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> I don't think that matters as much if they did or didn't, to be honest with you. Cool carbon fiber on it. Uh, I did see Todd Helm gave a uh, interview about it, which said that there will be some sort of adapter. I think he said it goes onto the battery, but I don't know if it goes onto the battery or in replacement of the battery where it can be corded. But he did said he did say, and I thought this was the most compelling thing about the Rupes machine, is that it's continuous runtime of forty minutes, so you have equal amount of power for that entire forty minutes, and then the battery just dies. I will tell you my flex battery powered cordless is a is a dog. It's terrible. It does not have enough power. So I, I tried to make it over to the roof as to see it. I just ran out of time. I was super busy. So that looks interesting to me. Pretty steep price point. Uh, so time will tell on that. Griot's Garage, Griot's Garage launched some car wash pods, which I thought was innovative. That is super innovative. Car wash pod. We'll see how that goes. I believe that was tried before, but I'm not 100% on that. Um, that was probably the most innovative thing I saw. I think they also launched with a ceramic glass cleaner and a ceramic tire shine. A little bit of a yawn there. But the car wash pod, someone else launched the car wash pod. Was it rust -Oleum? Someone else launched the car wash pod, so I'll definitely be trying those out. I have some questions about that. Um, that was probably the most innovative thing that I saw. So we'll see how that goes. But overall... Little weak on the innovation, but overall, I'm super excited. So, hope you guys enjoyed my post SEMA reaction. And uh, yeah, with that, I will catch you guys on the next episode. Don't forget to check out the detailing Discord or the detailing community group. That's over at autodetailingpodcast.com slash Discord. That is my community group where I share podcasts like this in advance. I give, do giveaways, give away free stuff that gets sent to me. Talk about stuff that I can't talk about even on this podcast. So, if you thought this episode was compelling, uh, wait till you see what I'm going to start talking about in the Discord. You get your first 30 days completely for free and you get full access. So you can check it out for free. Talk about all the stuff I talk about. Uh, interact with others there for free. And then it is $20 per month after 30 days reoccurring on that. Um, but you do get 30 days for free. No questions asked if you want to cancel. So if you cancel before the 30 days, it's free. There's It's not 20 bucks and then you know it costs nothing to join and see. So see at my skirt for free. And then you could pay me 20 bucks if you like what you see. Um, so with that, autodetailingpodcast.com slash discord. And I will see you guys in the discord or the community group and on the next podcast. Thanks for listening. See ya.